Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. I wanted to start off with a quick piece of good news. The Life by Science is offering a 15% discount on all products till the end of May with the discount code MHS15. For today's video, I'm looking at the health benefits of green tea. You may have heard that green tea is healthy, but is there data to support this? Today, we'll have a look at a couple of review papers showing an association of green tea with lower all-cause and some cause-specific mortality. Here is the first paper. This is a review of eight observational studies in Japan. The total population was 313,381. The participants were aged 40 and over at baseline, and the average follow-up time was 17.3 years during which there were 52,943 deaths. So this was a significantly large study. In the study, they looked at various causes of death, cardiovascular, cancer, stroke, respiratory, and accidental. We will look at the results for all-cause mortality. The first table is for the men, and it's grouped by the number of cups of green tea per day. This is the number of participants in each group, Interesting that the largest group is the one that drinks more than five cups a day. They used two hazard ratio models, HR1 corrected for age and location, while HR2 also corrected for smoking, BMI, alcohol intake, hypertension, diabetes, and coffee. I will look at HR2. A couple of points on this data. A hazard ratio is a measure of how often an event happens in one group compared to another. A hazard ratio of less than one means that the event is less likely, and more than one, it's more likely. In this case, the event was of someone dying. The hazard ratio results are significant if the 95% confidence interval does not cross over one, as the p-value of 0.05 represents a cutoff of 5%. So from these results, we can see that for all groups, using the group of one or less cups a day as a baseline of one, the hazard ratio was less than one and significant in each case. It is also dose dependent with the effect becoming stronger with larger numbers of cups and the highest group of men having a 10% less chance of dying when compared to those who did not drink tea at all. Now looking at the results for the women. The table is as before. And again, there is a significant decrease in all cause mortality at each level, up to an 18% reduced risk for those who drank five cups or more. The second study is from China, which used two datasets from Shanghai for a total of 136,492 participants, again with an age of 40 or over at baseline. The follow-up period for men was 8.3 years and for women 14.2. The participants were split into those who had never smoked and those who had smoked. This data is for the group who have never smoked, as this seems to be the most relevant. Looking at those who regularly drink green tea, again we see a hazard ratio of less than one, indicating a reduced risk for those drinking green tea. The multivariate hazard ratio included corrections for a number of extra factors, and so is probably the better number. This showed an 11% decrease in risk. Looking at the data by amount of tea consumed, they divided the groups up into never, above and below the median. Interestingly, in this case, it was not dose dependent, and those consuming less than the median had a lower hazard ratio. In this study, they measured consumption by grams of green tea. The median for men was 8.22 grams, and for women, 3.29 grams. Doing some searching, I found that it was approximately 2 grams of tea per cup. So this would equate to 4.1 cups for men and 1.6 cups for women. So green tea does seem to reduce all-cause mortality. Why might this be? What is it in green tea that is producing this effect? Here are some thoughts from the papers. The health effects are mostly attributed to polyphenols and a type of polyphenol in particular called a catechin. Epidemiological and animal studies show that the catechins may have a positive impact on endothelial and vascular function through inhibition of oxidation, reducing vascular inflammation and lowering blood lipids. Pointing to green tea helping with longevity, especially with chronic medical conditions related to cardiovascular diseases. One of the key catechins is epigallocatechin 
gallate or EGCG, which is found in the highest concentrations in green tea and has been shown to regulate blood pressure, body fat, lipids and improve glycemic control. I have tried green tea, but it does not go well with my stomach and even one cup will make me feel a little nauseous. I don't see that I'm going to be able to drink three or more cups in a day. So one alternative may be to take a green tea extract. Like many polyphenols, catechins are not well absorbed. A 2018 paper looking at EGCG taken orally in tea found only 1.68% was absorbed into the human body. Liposomal delivery may help with this. There was a recent study looking at the absorption of various catechins from green tea when compared to a standard green tea extract. They did see much larger absorption, in aggregate 12.5 fold increase. And we can see that for EGCG, the increase was a 10 fold increase. Alive by Science has introduced a liposomal green tea extract, which I have ordered and will be trying. I will let you know how I get on. Thank you all for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.